part of like presenting is like getting all the right like windows and like sharing the right screens and everything. I got, like I got my notepad right here. I've got the <laughs> chat window down here. I got the presentation going on over here. And yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. We're live. We should start talking like we like we know what we're doing. All right. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to a, another episode of V Brown Bag. Tonight, I am very excited that we've got Jessica Garson, who is the Senior Developer Advocate for Twitter on, on the hook for, the, uh, for tonight's presentation. But uh, first, we're going to learn a little bit about her. Um, she is a Senior Dev Advocate at Twitter, and I ran into her. Well, so she posted a article on dev.to um, about this fantastic little Python visualization thing that she did. And I saw it, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I, I want to... I want to talk to this person. So I, I, you guys know me, I, I just ping people blind. I said, Hey, my name's Chris. How's it going? Uh, I do a thing and uh, we got some friends and we all like learning and, and uh, nerding out on Wednesday nights. Would you like to come on and, and do a talk? And as, as a proper dev advocate, she jumped at the opportunity because, you know, that's, I, I love, I love dev advocates. Um, they, they've been they've been doing something and getting paid for it while I've been not I, I just do this for free. There's there's a there's a miss here. I, I need to figure this fix this. Um, so I'm sorry. You gonna say Jessica? I was gonna say I keep telling you that you should do developer advocacy. I feel like <laughs> I feel like you're doing you're doing all the things right. So you should consider developer advocacy. You should, you should be getting advocate. paid for this, Chris. What are you thinking? <laughs> Stop doing this for free. <laughs> cool. All right. So tonight we are going to talk about getting started with Python visualizations. Uh, again, this is based on the article that she wrote, and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be an amazing talk. She she agreed, and so here we are. Um, but before we start chatting with her, let's make sure that we do all of these show notes. If you are in the live studio audience and you at V Brown Bag or hashtag V Brown Bag, I will be a pay paying attention, ironically, on Twitter for, uh, for some feedback. So if you guys have any questions for her or me, um, put them either in the Q&A, in the live chat, or on Twitter. And I'll be paying attention to that. And then I will be feeding the questions to Jessica. Um, if you want to follow her, and I highly encourage you to do so, you can follow her at Jessica Garson on Twitter. And uh, if you want to watch any of the other channels, we have the APAC, EMEA, and Brazil, and LATAM V Brown Bag channels um, in your chosen language of choice, as long as it's either English, Spanish, or, or Portuguese. And uh, we, we, can, we can continue on from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing. And Jessica, if you want to start sharing, that's cool. But first, I want to learn a little bit more about you because you've got some fun background. And I think everybody else should learn about you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think I, I think I have a unique story. So yeah, um, what do you want to know? So, so um, based upon our previous conversation, you said some, some things and I, and I wanted to get into it because it's fascinating. You've gone from, from politics to data science to my ex-college roommate taught you sysadmin stuff in 2011, which is a complete Kevin Bacon moment for me. I was like, holy mackerel, are you kidding me? Um, and, and, then, and then you got into music and then you started making music with Python and then you started getting into bands playing music with Python on stage. <laughs> I need to know all about this. Go, yeah, go, I go. Also, I also <laughs> just realized, like, after we had this conversation, I think I do have a track on a compilation recorded entirely in Python um, that's dropping tonight at midnight. So, Are you on Spotify? Because I, I, I need to listen I, I to this. I don't think it's on Spotify. I actually don't know. It's like a festival. It's like a music festival that, like, used to happen at New York DIY venues. Mm -hmm. um, but is now happening in the virtual space this year. Um, and then there's, like, a, a lineup announcement, but y'all know that I'm on the lineup now. And then there's like a song dropping for the compilation, but I don't know like where it's going to be. Um, I just know that like <laughs> that the compilation is dropping tonight at midnight. So I'll, or, or I think so. I don't actually know. Um, I, but I, you I, asked I, 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 like, <laughs> Yes, yes. <go. laughs> um, you asked a lot of questions. So let's talk about the music first and I'll talk about my background a little bit too. Um, so music, um, I, I used to run a meetup called Hack and Tell, which was like five minute presentations, kind of similar to this, but it was like modeled after like a punk show where it was like, just like very quick presentations where you come in and you're like, I built a thing and then you talk about it and then you have five minutes for questions and then we move on to the next person. But the thing about running that kind of meetup is that like you never have enough presenters, right? Because like 
really Never. if you right. get like five people to present then that's like you know 50 minutes right <laughs> like that's right, not right, even right, right, right. that is 10 <laughs> minutes short of an hour so like you really need to have like you can't just have like three people present or just like one person present you also need to have like all the people present so what that meant was that every month i had to build something and one month i was like oh like i, I used to be in a hardcore band for a second and like maybe like i want to do something with music and code like that sounds fun and i like just googled like coding music and i didn't know at the time how like what doors that was going to open up for me but i found a program called sonic pi which let you which lets you write code in ruby um mm. and I was like, oh my God, I could do this. Like, this is awesome. And it sounded weird and discordant, which is like the type of stuff that I like. So I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I tried to book myself at like punk shows in DC, but everybody at the time was like, you can't just like write code at a punk show. And I was like, why not? Like, I it's punk, I'll do whatever I want. Yeah, like <laughs> I promise it's gonna be cool. And then they were like, no. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess like, yeah. and they were like, you can't just like write code on stage. And I was like, but like, it's going to make sounds and it's going to be weird. Um, so and, that's and this was, and this was before EDM when people just used a thumb drive and hit a button and just jammed out on stage. So this was like around <laughs> the same time as EDM. Like, was it? Okay. All right. So it was like 2017, but, but like the punk kids didn't want to be the EDM kids. Like they're, 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 there's like some weird stuff. Right. Okay. And so right. I moved to New York and I was like hanging out with one of my college buddies and I was like, Oh yeah. Like I, I, I did some like weird EDM type stuff, but it, it kind of wasn't really EDM, but like it was like live coding. And like, I was trying to book a show and my friend was like, there's like an algo rave happening tonight. And I was like, what do you mean algo rave? Like, what is this? And I was like, oh, this is awesome. So I went and then made friends with everybody and played shows and- What, okay, so I, I, don't, I don't know what that means. What is an algo rave? It's a live coded music and art event. So- Oh, that's well, perfect. That was, yeah, that was yeah. perfect. Yeah. You yeah, just so hadn't met your people yet. That was the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so I met my people. I spoke about it. I, I, and then I was like, oh, maybe I could do this with Python because that's like my language of choice. And I was like, mm. cool. Like, what if I do it in Py with Python? And I did. And then like I found the library um, Fox dot for it. And then I started like sampling my own screams and like replacing the, the built-in scream samples with my screams and like made it weird and discordant. And now I'm working on the record. So that's the most fun hobby I have. But I also have a band called with a really bad name, Egg. <laughs> um, e -G -G, Egg. Egg. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's Egg TM. We, we um we're, we're just kind of like figuring all that out. Um and that was like after that pan or like i guess we're still in the pandemic but like when it was safer to start gathering with people in small groups i was really craving human connection and i was like i kind of want to be in a band again and like not write code and so mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. that's something that i was doing so yeah and then also you just asked about like my technical background which is less interesting but i um <laughs> i'm from washington dc so it's a company town and i thought that like what you do when you graduate from college is you work in politics um and like i didn't really think of anything different from that for most of my career <laughs> up until like <laughs> i was like oh yeah okay cool like i'm from dc like this is what i do i'm just gonna do it i'm gonna work on campaigns and like it's going to be it. And I did that. Um, and then I got like really into like how data gets into databases, because mm. when you are working on a campaign, like the whole goal is to create a list large enough to turn out the vote for your candidate. And that's right, like a right. data task. And so I got like really into that. And then I was like, wait, maybe I should learn how to code. And then mm. started like doing that on my own. We've back to DC, found a community group called Hear Me Code, which was like free beginner friendly classes for women by women. Oh, nice. Like planning meetups and doing all that stuff. And then became mm. a software engineer and then slowly like transitioned from like tech to, or from like, for, from like politics to tech, but had like jobs in that space where one of them was where I met James um, and your former college roommate. <laughs> um, Cause like he was doing like sysadmin <laughs> stuff and I was doing like tech support, but like he was doing the more like sysadmin stuff. And I was just like trying to learn how to code and like trying to like figure out how things work and so. Yeah. So did you pick Python because of the data science stuff because of the politics? Is, is it all like a big circle here? Is that is that how you got into Python? Yeah, like yes and no. Um, so I worked at a company that was a Perl shop and I was mm. like trying to read everyone else's code and I was like doing more like data stuff 
for them, but like more like front end data stuff. Like there was like a data program that we were all using and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like in charge of that, but like, it was not necessarily like, it was more like tech support rather than like data in the way that we think of it. But I was like, oh, like I want to learn how like all the code, like all the pieces fit together and they're all using right. Perl. So I like mm -hmm. got a Perl book and my colleague at the time, my friend, my good friend Lee now pulled me aside and was like, hey, so if I had that to do now, I wouldn't learn Perl. <laughs> like I would learn Python. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Right. And, and the year on this was like 2012, I want to say. Yeah, I think it was 2012. So like, you okay, know, so, so so Python 3 had been out for a little bit. Yeah. And he was like, I think I would learn Python if you like, we just wrote this in Perl because that's what we knew, but like, you should just learn Python and it'll be easier for you to learn Perl. And I did, but I did do that. So nice. yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the so we actually had a really fascinating uh, talk with the data scientists last year. Um, we, we, so last year we did an entire series on Python, and I wish I had met you back then because this would have fit in perfectly with that entire sequence. Um, but the the very first person uh, that we had on, her name is Ayodele Odubella, and I always mangle that name. But she is a, she's an amazing data scientist, and and her, and her passion for Python and everything. So so I was I was, and she's also in politics too. I think you, could, you two would get along famously. I I, I know that for a fact. Um, <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. So so cool. So you've so you've been in the Python dev space, and and then you got into to data science, and then you you became a musician. Now you're starting a a post pandemic band, <laughs> and then Twitter approached you and said, Hey, why don't you become a dev advocate? for us like that, that's yeah. that's I'm, I'm getting whiplash from your career part choices here <laughs> yeah it was more like i don't know like at one point i was just kind of like i was teaching at ny so i moved to new york to teach at ny i kind of like was a software engineer at a couple of pr companies like <laughs> like crisis communication in, in dc or in, in new york um dc and okay. I, I i liked that work but i didn't love that work like there was like agency type work and I was like a software engineer there, but they weren't really like software companies. And I just like had two jobs that were kind of similar. And I was mm. like, I don't know, like what I'm doing, like, this doesn't like, it doesn't feel like this is the right path that I don't, I didn't know why, like both of them were like Django shops and things like that. And I just didn't gotcha. like, I liked it, but I just didn't feel like super passionate about it. So I was like, I don't mm. know. And then I was like, kind of one day randomly like somebody asked me if i wanted to teach at nyu and i was like yes like cool and so like i quit my job and moved to new york and like was like doing that and then it was around the time i found like live code mic and started like working on my art and like thinking about like code as art and like having conversations with people and like my former boss from actually the job i had with james was like who I think might be at Microsoft. I don't know where he, I haven't talked to him in a while, but he was like, oh, if you like writing code on stages and planning meetups and like building like projects that you could talk about, which it seems like you do, like there's a job, developer advocacy, you should do that. And so I started applying for developer advocate jobs and like talking to folks. And then it took me about like, maybe like six months to kind of like find the right fit. But um, tw the Twitter API was one of the first, um, APIs I used was the first time I made internet happen, which was like really exciting. Like, I don't know if, if everybody has like different backgrounds, but I came from an untraditional background and like yep. making servers was really hard, like making like internet, ha like I could build a site, but I couldn't make it happen. And I was like really struggling. And so hmm. the Twitter API was the first time that my code made a tweet happen. And I was like, oh my God, like I did it. Like I made a tweet happen. Like my code can like make internet happen in some way, shape or form. And like, that's so exciting. Um, so that was sort of like that first like moment of being a developer where I was like, oh my God, this works. And so the Twitter API has been like really important to me. And like, I don't know who like doesn't want a job where there's like the possibility of making Twitter bots for work. Right. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> it's either here or Russia. That's, I mean, those are the two choices. So absolutely get a job, <laughs> yeah. get a job at, at Twitter. Yeah. So I was like, okay, like I, I could like do like make, and there's like so much creative stuff that you can do with the Twitter API. And I was like really like more leaning into the creative programming side of things. So I don't know, I feel like because it's like the public conversation, like there's just so much happening and like there's so much you could do. And so that was like why I wanted to work at Twitter and they offered me a job and I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, like, but this seems right, so. Very cool, awesome. 
Okay, cool. Well, I, I, I don't want to take away from the presentation because I'm, I'm very excited about, about that too. Um, I, 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 can, I could literally talk to you for hours. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut up so, so that we can actually get the presentation going so that people in the audience can ask questions and, 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 we, can, and we can get that flow because th this, is, this is all fascinating to me. And, and, uh, and I was especially tickled that, that you hung out with my, my college roommate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that my bizarre career path has like led me somewhere. Um, um, so anyway, amazingly random. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, one of my favorite parts of my job is that like I could just like build things with the Twitter API for work. And so today I'm going to talk to you all about something that I built. Um, <laughs> so um, really this presentation is about getting started with Python visualizations, but it actually, um, I feel like you did set me up pretty well for this. Um, but before we go too deep into the project or into what I built, I should introduce myself. My name is Jessica Garson, Jess Garson. Most of my friends call me pronouns, she, they. Um, I'm a developer advocate of Twitter. And what that means is that I get to build with the Twitter API, build example apps, talk to groups of people such as this one, um, have one-on-ones with developers to hear what you all want to see. Um, I also, on the flip side of things, um, represent the developer perspective in the launch process, build documentation, build code samples, Postman collections, all of that fun stuff. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit about what I do for work. Um, if you ever want to talk to me about developer advocacy, I'm also very happy to, as Chris can tell you, I've been trying to talk to him, talk him into being a developer advocate as well. Um, so yeah, if, if, if anybody has questions about that as a career path, um, talk to me. But today, uh, I have a little bit of an agenda. It feels very packed, but it really, it's going to flow smoothly, I think. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the options for data visualization in Python. We're going to talk a little bit about what Dash is, why you would use Dash, um, what problem was I solving for, like why did I even do this, um, and then we're going to do an overview of the solution just because I really like like schematics um, and showing like how you actually like solve a problem, and then I'm going to um, do a live coded demo. So if you see something while I'm doing that, please say something. But before I do that, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the Twitter API. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about deployment because this is the uh, v brown bag and um then we have time for q a sound good absolutely cool. and, uh, sounds fantastic and also yeah feel free to ask questions as you go as i go um yeah let me know um i always like like hearing from y'all so oh absolutely this is gonna, this is going to be a very organic situation here where i'll field questions and i have i'm going to have tons of dumb questions myself because i am the dumbest <laughs> person on the planet when it comes to this stuff so I'm going to be like, yeah, what is, what does deaf mean? No, I'm not going to do that. It's okay. I mean, honestly, I feel like that's what, like, I'm also kind of like slow when it comes to some of this stuff, but I feel like it makes me like a really good developer because like, I don't know, I feel like sometimes these concepts take a minute and that's okay. And like, that's like totally fine. And like, I don't know, I'm, I used to be like really hard on myself about being slow and now i'm like oh yeah like that makes me a really good developer and i can like find bugs and code really easily it and makes I know you how methodical to... and it makes you you know step through it slowly absolutely yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah let's talk about um visualization of python also um, i'm gonna actually do a call to action so if you all have a favorite python plotting library please let us know in the chat um tonight we're going to be using plotly i guess matplotlib is my favorite just because i've used it the most mm. um there's also seaborn which i like a lot there's ggplot which i mostly use i think it's plot nine now in python but i mostly use it in r if i'm like in r for whatever reason Boca, which is kind of pretty and does some similar stuff to dash um there's pygal there's geoplotlib and there's a bunch of other ones but i'm, I'm interested in hearing from you all like what you all have been using for, for plotting. Um, I don't know. I feel like this list might be a little bit older, but I, I feel like there's new plotting libraries every day. So if you all have ones that you're using, please let me know. Um, I'm always looking to like look into that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options out there. And so Dash is something that I've always wanted to use, actually. Um, and it allows you to quickly set up a Flask app to create a web framework for visualizations. And it's actually, you can use it in Python, R, Julia, or .NET. Tonight, we're going to be using it in Python, obviously. Um, but I really wanted to use it because it's a really great way to like make internet happen quickly. And so 
I mentioned this actually earlier, you, you set me up actually pretty well, Chris, which is that it took me a really long time to like figure out how servers work. And so I'm always like really intrigued by these situ by these like tools that exist now in the modern world that like let you quickly make web happen. And like that makes me really excited because it took me like a long time to figure it out. So I heard a little bit about Dash um, and I wanted to use it. Um, and so I used it for this example, mostly because we launched a new endpoint that had counts. And I was like, oh, so Dash just lets you take a, a pandas data frame and turn it into a graph and make a website really quickly. That seems awesome. And it's like, seems like a really good way to like quickly prototype a solution and figure out what the solution would look like. So I thought it was kind of perfect. And I kind of like, you know, we launched this new thing and I was like, you know, like I really want to like play around and like, you know, maybe make a site. Um, so you might be wondering like, what problem are you solving for? Like, what was, what is the site that you made? <laughs> and so basically very simple. I just wanted to see how often I was tweeting in a given week. I thought that I was tweeting a lot on that given day, just to be very honest. I was like, I think I'm tweeting a lot. Like, I think I'm tweeting a lot more than I usually tweet. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if this is like true or false. And we just launched this like recent tweet count endpoint. So maybe I could like see if that's true. And it was, I was tweeting, like my graph went like that, like I was tweeting a lot. So you might be wondering like, what is this graph? Um, so I made this graph that, um, will tell me how often I am tweeting every day. Um, and it's very much tweets by date. And it just shows, you know, like if I, I didn't tweet on the 7th, I tweeted, I, I, I was tweeting a lot today. Um, I think it technically thinks I'm on the 11th now. So that's maybe something, I think this is the latest I've ever shown this graph to anybody. So I think I might have to adjust some, I think it's in UTC time. So I might have to adjust the time zones. So that's a good oh, to do. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, but that's okay. Um, you know, um, it's good to kind of show, but this is the graph I made and it's posted on Heroku. And I just was like, hmm, I wonder if I can make a graph. And um, just cause I thought I was tweeting a lot one day. I, I was tweeting, I tweeted like 19 times, which is like very high for me. I don't actually tweet that much in a given day. So um, yeah, I think I was just excited about like a new launch. So let's talk a little bit about like an overview of the solution. So the first thing that, you, that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up, you're going to want to make sure that you have the right framework to start working with Dash. So you're going to want to import all your Python packages. I'm going to show y'all how to do this in a minute. And then we're going to set up our app.py file. Then we're going to create some functions to authenticate and connect to the Twitter API. I'll be talking a little bit about how to get access to the Twitter API in a couple of slides. And then from there, we're going to create a data frame. And as I mentioned earlier with dash you can actually take your like columns of the data frame and turn it into a graph of plotly and then it like makes this website for you using flask which is like pretty awesome so basically once you create your data frame for the tweets that match your query then you could do some some very quick data cleanup and then from there you can customize your dash page to show your graph the way that you envision um so like when this so the first time that i built that graph that i just showed it had like a dark background and like, I don't know, I thought that it wasn't the most visually pleasing. So I was able to like customize a little bit to kind of get it to where it is now. Um, so let's talk a little bit about getting started with the Twitter API. So before you can use um, the Twitter API v2, um, you will need to have an approved developer account. Um, and once you have an approved developer account, um, you'll need to create a project in the developer portal and each project contains an app and with which you can use um, the credentials to um, use the Twitter API. And um, we have like getting started in our documentation and all of that. So I can actually, I think I have some, yeah, I have some, um, some windows open. So here's our getting started page. Let me actually, I'm gonna find the chat. Hold on one second. Cool. Um, and Chris has only used uh, Matt Plotlib. I, I like Matt. I think Matt Plotlib's my favorite, honestly. Um, so here's our getting started. And actually, let's actually do, let's, and here's the tutorial that this was all based off of. And I'm actually going to Google um, apply 
apply, <laughs> apply for access to Twitter API. And this is how you can apply for access um, to the Twitter API if you don't have access already. Um, and we are going to be, um, you know, we're always looking to make improvements to that as well. So um, that is something that we are kind of like looking into right now. So if you if you run into any issues or anything like that, just send me a DM. My DMs are open. So just be like, hey, Jess, I saw you in a V brown bag and, you know, want to talk to you about it. Sometimes like things get weird. So, yeah, cool. So that's um, applying for access. Um, and you might be wondering, like, where do you get your credentials from? So um, I have a couple of different projects, but for this one, I have one that's this video project. And then from here, if I go to this little like keys and tokens page, then I can actually go and get all of my keys and tokens. And today we're only going to be using one key, uh, the bearer token, which lets you do app only OAuth 2. Um, so from here, you know, I would just regenerate that if I needed the credential again, but that's where you can get um, your keys and tokens. So now let's actually go back into the presentation. I think we're at the demo point. Yes, we are at the demo point, but I just want to actually say something. So I was talking to Chris about this earlier um, and I really like live coding. Um, I live code music. I do a lot of live coding in my life. And I felt like this was a good place where I can just write code. And so we're going to do this. I don't have much written. So we're, this is going to be a live coded adventure. So if you see something, say something. We're all developers here. I never feel as safe as I do when I'm in a room full of developers. Cause I know that if I, if there's like a syntax error, like that's gonna, if I forget to like close parentheses, y'all are gonna tell me. So someone will say something. <laughs> yeah, so if you see something, do not be shy in saying something. Um, it kind of makes me feel like I'm hosting like a game show or something. Like we're all making this thing together and it feels very collaborative. So yeah, if you see something, say something. Cool, let's start the live demo. <laughs> so, um, the first thing that we're actually going to do is we're going to, from here, we are going to save the file <laughs> and we're just going to call it app.py. Um, and now from here, so now we have that, which is awesome. So now we can actually get started. And the first thing that we'd want to do within our terminal is import everything into our environment. So we're going to do pip3 install dash. Um, dash is the library that lets us make the Flask page. There's pip3 install dash bootstrap components. Um, and that's really fun because that lets us customize our page a little bit more. Um, and then from and then from there, we're going to use request, which is the Python package for making HTTP requests. That's how we're going to connect to the Twitter API. And then we're also going to install pandas. That gives us the data frame from which we can make our graph as well. So um, from here, what we're going to want to do is now we can actually go back into our file and start importing everything that we need. So from here, let's do import dash, import dash bootstrap components. Did I spell components right? Yeah. <laughs> I think I did. Okay. And then let's call that DDC because I was not sure if I spelled dash bootstrap components and I probably won't spell it right again. So let's use an alias there. Uh, let's do again import dash core components. The thing I've learned so far is that components is a hard word to spell. <laughs> DBC <laughs> or actually DCC. That's <laughs> as DCA for autocorrect. Cool. All right. And then from here, import dash HTML components. <laughs> and let's do HTML. That, that feels like a good one. Um, and then since we are going to be using Plotly for the graph, we're going to do plotly.express as PX. And then import OS. This is going to be used for us so that you don't have to see my bearer token. So I have a bearer token that's already saved. Um, so you don't have to see any of my credentials. So we're going to use that to get our environment variable. And then from here, 
Um, we're gonna do import pandas as PD, and then we could do import requests. Cool, so now we've kind of set up our file. Let's press save just because of that. And then the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna create a variable to kind of initialize our app. So we could do app equals dash dot dash. <laughs> and then from here, we're gonna do external style sheets. And we're gonna have this equal to DBC dot themes. And my favorite one is journal. Um, and that's like the, just like bootstrap component themes. <laughs> like that's pretty simple. So from mm -hmm. here, we're gonna do that. And then let's actually set up the server. So we're gonna have to spell a server, right? <laughs> <laughs> app.server and then that kind of lets us like kind of initialize our server so from here um the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to set up the endpoint so the search url is going to be um our recent search counts endpoint so from here and this lets us get tweets from the past seven days that match a given qu query so from here we could do api dot twitter.com we're going to be using the new version two tweets counts recent cool so now from here we're going to actually start to kind of figure out like what data we want to get back so we can do query params and then from here we can set this as query and then i think i spelled query right <laughs> cool and then we're gonna have this be for me this is my twitter handle jessica garson and then the granularity um is day so we want this to be um by day if you don't specify day you get back hourly and that seems like a little bit much so and let's do day and actually, I want to put that inside of, yeah, cool. All right, cool. I think we have everything that we need here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut and paste the word granularity um, that I just Googled in a different tab, just because I want to make sure that I spelled that right. Um, so cool. Um, awesome. <laughs> Great. So now the next part is that we're going to want to make sure that we have our environment variable set. So as I mentioned, I have an environment variable that's already saved. But let's say I didn't, um, I can actually in here fake it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export a bearer token and I'm gonna say it's gonna be my bearer token. And then I'm gonna do control C so I don't actually run it, but that's what I would do. But instead of my bearer token, I would actually cut and paste my bearer token from the developer portal. Right instead of my bear token, but I don't want to show you all my secrets. So to totally cool. I'm not going to show it to you, but I have, but that's how I have it running. Just so we have super shady people in our audience who will totally abuse a bearer token. So you, you don't want to do that. <laughs> what? No secrets. Yes. Um, so now inside my code, I can actually um, write a function. So we could do, let's do def bearer. Oh, uh, and then from here we can actually pass in R and we could do R dot headers and we can make some authorization headers. So we could do authorization. And then from here, we're gonna use F strings um, and then we could do bearer. And then from here, Let's do bearer token. And then from here, we have that. Cool. And then I also, I like to, to know who's using my tutorials. <laughs> um, so I always add a user agent so I can like see if people are actually using my tutorials or not. Um, and that's just a way for me on the back end. I'm, I'm showing y'all how the, the sausage is getting made. On the back end, I can see like if people are actually using this tutorial, I get to see that based on the user 
agent. So if it's still getting started dash, I know that people are like kind of pasting my code, which is pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, that helps me kind of see like what, which of my tutorials are working and which ones aren't. So from here, now I can have that. And so we have that. Um, and you don't have to have the user agent if you're like, I don't want to show you what I'm doing. <laughs> That's totally cool. Um, so now the next part, um, I'm actually going to cut and paste this part just because I want to make sure that I get it right. This is um, connecting to the endpoint. So um, for this, um, we actually can um, have another function called connect to endpoint. And then we pass in the URL and the tweet fields are like basically what you use to kind of customize your request um so from here we're going to make a get request using the request package of python and then the mm -hmm. url is just going to be that your that search url that we have up above there um the auth is going to be that bearer auth that was that function that we set and then the parameters are going to be just whatever tweet fields we want um and for for us that's just the query parameters um and then from here I just like to print out the response status code. Like I always like to see the 200s because then I could like troubleshoot. Right, right. Um, so I like to print that out. And then if it's not, then I get to know what, why not. Um, and I have the response status code and the response text. And then I print out the response JSON just so I could easily convert it into a data frame. Um, so uh, quick, quick question. Yeah. Is so so that piece of it right there is using is using the format and not the f string is is that because of some back end thing in 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 the in the call that doesn't Anna, know okay to... so i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to tell you a secret which is that i didn't start using f strings and <laughs> Pretty recently. No, so, really? Yeah, I learned how to code with that format. And then about like a couple of months ago, I just started using F strings. So as soon as I saw F strings, I was like, the angels sang and the heavens came down. I was like, oh, hallelujah. I stopped using format immediately. That's funny because I still like, it's kind of like a ghost of my past. Like right, I right, know right, right, I totally. should be using F Oh, no, do what you want, do what you want. No, no. I, 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 I was wondering <laughs> if that was because of some kind of call on the back end within Twitter that didn't know how to parse that or something. Nope, that is me learning how to, because there was no F strings when I learned how to code. Gotcha, in gotcha. Python, And now there is. And so it's just like in my head, I'm just gonna like, um be very honest so i think that was honestly me writing code in front of an audience and being like oh i know i should use f strings earlier <laughs> and then when i cut and pasted this i i did not so okay. yeah i'm Sorry, trying to be no. better i do think that f strings are cool though like um but just for those who don't know f strings and dot format do the same thing they're just they, they absolutely they absolutely do it's the, ex it's the exact same thing there's like three different ways that you can do it and and uh, it, it it threw me off when I first, so I first started learning Python after F strings came out. So when I saw the dot format stuff, I was like, what is that? What, what, why do people use that? And then then Calvin explain, explained to me why, where the format came from. Cool. Yeah, so that's awesome. So I actually started writing kind of the connection um, line of code. So from here, mm -hmm. we're just gonna have the JSON response and we're just gonna, um, call that function that we just that I just cut and pasted, connect to endpoint, and then search URL, and then the query parameters in here. Mm. So from here we have that, and then from the next thing that we can do is we can actually start to make our data frame. So that's just pd dot data frame, and actually, let's actually take a step sideways, and I want to show you all how I kind of like play around with this before I'll like start writing code, I'll often use a REST client such as Postman or Insomnia, um, just cause like, I don't know, I like to know exactly what data I'm gonna get back. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of a crazy person. So I always like to like, just double check that before I get started. Um, mm -hmm. So inside of Postman, I'll typically like use the, the Twitter Postman collection and I'll just like, make sure that I get back the data I want. Um, and that's really fun because we've sort of moved to this, what you ask for is what you get way of like having a payload. So we have these like tweet fields. And so from here, I can actually add things like Ling, or maybe I wanted to add in here, 
that's another good one. Create it up so I could like just make sure that I have all of the data I need for my application before I start writing. And this just kind of lets me like, you know, play around with it a little bit. And so now you can see all the things I've been tweeting lately. <laughs> um, so like, you know, that's always fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, that's kind of cool. And you can actually like play around with it a little bit, but I always like to do this before I like start writing. And then that's I that's a great like, idea. I love that. Yeah. And so I always like to do that. I also, just to be very honest, like the first time that I wrote this, just to make sure that I had like the pandas part of it, right? I actually like imported in my JSON file <laughs> into yep. like a Jupyter notebook. And then from there, just kind of played around with it just to make sure that like the graph looked the way I wanted it to look and all of that stuff. So, you know, there's like no right or wrong way to do all of this. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of times when I speak at these types of things, like I show the finished product, but I'm trying to be better about like showing like the process along the way. So um, the next few lines of code, I'm just going to be very honest. I probably wrote inside of a Jupyter notebook and then cut and pasted it just to kind of be a little bit more iterative about it. So from here, let's actually um, well, actually we need to make our data frame. <laughs> so let's actually, I, I'm like immediately like writing code to get the, to get like the non-existent, um, variables back, but let's actually create a data frame called DF. And then from here we could do PD dot data frame. And then from here, we're going to pass in the JSON response and then inside, actually, let me, let's go back. To looking at the payload because yeah there was a reason i think I it was data yeah yeah, yeah there is yeah there's a data object and then there's this meta object which shows you because you only unless you specify max results you'll only get back the last 10. so these are only eight tweets and so mm. from from here you can actually see that um and this is just using recent search, not the recent search counts endpoint, but this kind of like lets you kind of play around a little bit. And we, nice. we can also look at the recent search counts as well if we wanted, but I always just kind of want to like see what type of data I'm getting back. And so from here, that just lets you kind of like take a look at the object as well. And so the recent search counts, that's going to give us just the counts and like nothing more. So from here, what we can do, and actually, do we want to see that or? Do you all want to sure. see it in Postman? Okay, cool. Hold yeah, on yeah, totally. Okay, cool. So what we can do here, I'm going to do what every good developer does, which is cut and paste my query. So I'm actually going to take out these tweet fields. And then from here, let's actually, um, what I am going to do is, do we have the accounts in here? Oh, actually, maybe it's in this other copy. <laughs> yes, three counts. Cool. All right. So now from here. Okay. And then I am just going to, I'm going to actually just make sure that my secrets are set inside of this request because I had to go into a different package. So mm. I am going to pull this and you could see the graph <laughs> for a second away. <laughs> Yay for having multiple tabs. Um, and so from here, everybody close your eyes. <laughs> no, I mean, you can't see anything. <laughs> um, yeah. So now from here, let's actually, I just want to make sure something really quickly. Okay, cool. All right. And so from here, cool. All right. I think this should be good to go. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to drag it back in. Yeah, so that's cool. And so now from here, let's actually show you all the actual payload. Cool. Oh wait, so that is still, oh, cause it's still count. I I, I made that mistake cause I was doing the accounts. I, I, I kind of pasted the full request and not the yay for that. So this is fun. Cause I get to show you like how, um, I think it's recent and let's actually, yeah, so now you can see all of the data here. And then actually, we can actually pull, I could also pass in the granularity too, but this is like hour by hour. And so we can actually like play with that a little bit, which is cool. I don't know, I just like working with Postman as like a way of making, like just seeing the data that you get back, like in a mm -hmm. raw form. And then from there, when I write code in Python, I have like more to kind of get started with, which is like, 
really fun. I don't know. At least I think it's fun. So um, all that to say is that we want the data object. So let's pass that in here. And then from here, now let's actually start setting up the website. Or actually, before we do that, um, I actually have to like make the graph. So um, from here, let's actually do df start. And then one of the things I had to do is I had to send this to date time just to kind of make the time a little bit more easier to parse. I think I got some errors when I first started doing this. So to date time. And then from here, we want the start. And yeah. And then from here. Oh, real, real fast. Uh, to date time. You've got an R in there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Roger noticed too. Y'all are the best. I love, 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 love presenting. Yay, yay pair coding. <laughs> yeah, pair programming. Uh, um, it's the best. Cool. And so then from here, um, I want to actually pull in the final, which is going to be DF. And then I can do this double brackets to kind of just pull in just the columns I want. And let's do start. And then from here, Let's do tweet count, cool. And so from here, those are just the two columns I want. And then again, I use like a Jupyter notebook when I made this so I can like actually like see it and know what I'm doing. Mm. And then from here, I just want the final, that's gonna be like the full data frame. And then I define my X axis as start and my Y axis as tweet count. And I'm changing the name here, or actually, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not changing the name at all. <laughs> um, thought I was, but I'm not. Uh, okay, cool. So now, now we can do the fun part, which is like setting up the colors. This is the part I was like jumping to because it's like, yes, the colors. So let's do, <laughs> um, let's do background inside of this dictionary, and then from here, let's kind of make it. Uh, from here. Um, thank you so much, Roger. It was great to meet you. Mr. Roger, have, have a wonderful evening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. He, cool. he's, an, he's another person I also work with at Worldwide. Oh, awesome. <laughs> cool. So we have this text, and then this is this like Twitter blue color that I'm putting in. So from here, let's do 1DA1DA. One DA, one Cool. You, you do not have the hex code for Twitter blue memorized, do you? No, but I do have a cheat sheet that has some, <laughs> that has some notes. Um, I did not memorize that, but I'll I say white, white's easy, but Twitter blue, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I'm not even 100% sure it's Twitter blue, but I believe it's Twitter blue. Um, and then let's do update layout. And then from here, let's do plot background or no it's vg color right yeah okay and let's do background nope it is you're right that, that is twitter blue <laughs> yeah um again i might have had a cheat i'm gonna be very honest i have a cheat sheet uh, it doesn't have like everything like it doesn't have all the code it has the stuff that i'm likely to misspell just because i know myself really well um <laughs> and it has like some of the bigger sections that if like everything goes wrong i have like a, a backup and i also may have a working example in this directory from earlier it is today. it is super important to have a pre-baked cake <laughs> at, for, for the end of the show just in case yeah exactly i've had to use it once and then so now the colors is just going to be the same colors as the text right. and yeah and actually we need to put quotes around that And cool. I don't think you need that. And I think my my auto farm meta will like update that. Cool. Um, and just because I feel a little bit weird about this, because um, this is different indentation than I typically do, I'm actually going to kind of paste this one, just because it's a little bit larger. It's the same code I just wrote for you, but I wanted yeah, you all yeah. to be able to see it better. Cool. So now 
I'm actually going to kind of paste the last part to you just to make sure that I have enough time to kind of talk to you all about this, but this is sort of like, the, so we have like, we updated the layout, we've kind of changed the colors a little bit, we've kind of set everything as like the background and the text colors, and we have like everything that we're starting to stylize a little bit more. And then from here, we can actually start setting HTML divs. So we can from here have that tweets by date in the center. And then from here, we can also like update, you know, the text of how much I've been tweeting. Um, let's actually change this a little bit. Um, let's do for V brown bag just to, yeah, cool. So now we have that. And then we have the text align the center. Colors are going to be the same as the text. And then I like to have an ID just so like if things go wrong, you could figure it out. And then the figure equals fig. And that's the like, that's yeah. just that like line graph. Um, somebody once asked me if you could change it to a bar graph and you can, you can do it like that. Um, I think the first time <laughs> that I showed this, somebody was like, how do you make a bar graph? Like they thought it should be a bar graph and not a line graph. And then now we're almost ready to, to run this and see if it works. So from here, the last thing is you just have to have that kind of like boilerplate name statement if name equals main and, and, and i'm always nervous i'm gonna have like too many underscores i think i'm i think i got it i, I always do that too <laughs> yeah um so let's do run server and i have to spell server right um, and then we could do a debug. No, not that. <laughs> Gave her <laughs> my auto form. I was trying to like help me out. <laughs> um, and cool. So now we have debug equals true. And now it's going to be the moment of truth to see if it works. Um, da -da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like this is like when I feel like I'm in a game show. So we could do Python app.py. Yay. Okay. Bear token is not defined. Okay. So I am going to, I'm going to pull this away. We're going to, we're going to go off screen for a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Avert, avert your gaze, everyone. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to check some stuff out. Um, so this is always fun, right? So a couple of things. So let's actually see, um, well, we did get an error saying that bear token is not defined. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search actually the code just to see like, Cool, let's actually find bear token. Oh, I didn't define the bear token. I very much did not. Okay, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> that is exactly what I didn't do. So this is cool. That was a helpful. I didn't actually have to look at any secrets or anything because I think I know what I did, which is I didn't set a variable for bear token. So from here, what we could do is bear token, and then we could do os.environ.get. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, R R O N. Oh, yeah, yeah. R R O N, not O R N. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay, yep. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then from here, I need to get the the bear token. So bear token. All right. Cool. Yay for errors. Um, and now I'm actually gonna drop my terminal back in. <laughs> Give me a second. Um, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to like make sure that I set the bear token, but I think the issue is as simple as me just not doing that. So we're gonna do again, and actually Python 3 both work for me just because I have my aliases. We're getting some 200s. I think we I think we did it. So now moment of actual truth too. There's like so many moments of truth with this. Let's go into yeah okay cool see what a prolific tweeter you are yeah there we go nice all right cool <laughs> all right so uh, and technically we're in tomorrow so you know i think um because of utc time so that's something that i learned while doing this and this is the latest i've ever run this code so that's cool <laughs> um cool so that's really fun and that looks very similar to what i have up on dash tubes or, or up on my getting started with my Heroku app. So that kind of segments us into a really fun part of this deployment, um, just because I know that this is sort of a deployment centered um, podcast. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about my deployment. So I deployed this using 
uh, Heroku and most notably the Heroku scheduler. I had always, this is another thing that I'm like, oh, I wanted to do this. I had heard that like the Heroku scheduler is like really easy to use these days. Uh, and I was uh, like, oh, let me be the judge of that. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I'm I will check. decide. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. Um, I had heard some stuff about it. So I set the time, I'm using like the free tier for this. Um, and I set the timing for every 10 minutes so that my site updates regularly. And also to ensure that I didn't like, commit my bearer token, I set my environment variable as a config var. So let's actually, let me show you actually the Heroku scheduler here. So you can actually just see it's like running Python app.py. It's the free dyno running every 10 minutes. And it shows you like how often it's running, which is kind of cool, mm -hmm. which is like pretty awesome. So, and yeah. Um, and actually 243 is probably around the time that I like set, set up this page um, that I did the walkthrough earlier, um, UTC. So, um, but yeah, um, that's a little bit about how I deployed it. Um, a couple of things that were like a little bit weird actually was that actually with this, I had to set up an apt file, um, which just basically kind of listed a couple of different things. Um, that was like the one thing that I like had some issues, but I was able to like easily set up my proc file and get everything running pretty quickly without doing too much Googling. And there was a guide on the dash in their documentation that kind of like walked through like a little bit of how to do it, but I had to do like a little bit more Googling, but it wasn't too bad. Um, and so that was really fun. And it was actually like, I'd used Heroku in the past, but it's been a minute and it was mm -hmm. easier than I remembered it being. So yeah, so that's nice. always fun. Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't too bad. And I don't know. It was kind of fun. So yeah, Q and A. Um, thank you all for like letting me show you this like cool project that I like built because I was like really excited about a new endpoint launch. Um yeah. No, that, that, that's that's super fun. I'm I I can't wait to actually do this myself and and do the Heroku stuff. I've been meet, I've been meaning to play with Heroku for a long time too. So so this this is going to be a, a great um, and and I'm for for the listeners in the audience and the listeners in the future that are listening to this I'm going to put in a link to the dev.to article for this as well that gives an amazing walkthrough of the entire process and it also gives a link to the Heroku slices as well so that folks can can jump into that and and check out this entire process um, and and learn a bunch about uh, Python as as they progress yay. <laughs> Oh, cool. Awesome. You, you dropped it. Very cool. Uh, yeah, Q&A. Like, what questions do y'all have? I want to hear from you. Um, folks, any any questions from the audience? Anything that uh, let me let me let me scour the um, the, the Twitter sphere as well. Uh, Dennis, no, no, he's saying thank you. Um, Stephanie is saying thank you. Uh, Roger had a drop. <laughs> No, no, I mean, uh, honestly, I, I just, I want to, I, I don't have any immediate questions because I want to just do it, do it for myself and, uh, and, and dive into it. Um, I, I literally just learned about pandas myself, um, like, like a week ago. So, so the, the grabbing the data frame and everything, I, I, I just learned about it. So I, I don't have any, any questions that I want to drill down to from that. I learned about how you can use pandas to like, you know, call a method as a, or call a, a column head as a method. I was like, oh my God, that is so cool. Isn't that so, like really uh, like, yeah. I, I remember the first time I heard that too. And I was like, wait, what? Like, how does that work? Like, cool. Yeah. I, it's really I fun. was, I was beating my head against the wall, trying to figure out how to like grab a value from like a, a, a drop down and some, somebody, and, and I knew it was going to be simple, but I beat my head into a wall for like five hours trying to just figure out how to like grab this data properly. And somebody's like, well, why don't you just use the dot X? Because the because the, co the column name was dot x and I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, here, watch, and he <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, that is so easy. I love I I officially love pandas right now. It's uh, awesome. it's great. Yeah, totally fun. Cool. Yeah. Well, it doesn't it doesn't look like anybody has any questions, and and we actually hit the ex one hour and one minute mark perfectly. Yeah. That's I, don't, awesome. I don't I don't know if you it timed that perfectly or if you're just amazing, but that was that was a fantastic job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing I did want to kind of point out is also like where to get help. Um, I'm you might see me if you're active on the Twitter community forums, um, myself and the other advocates on the team spend some time there. So oh, nice. Um, if you're like, oh, my God, like nothing's working and like I can't figure out how Jess did all this stuff. 
and I'm trying to do something similar, or if you're just like running into issues with the Twitter API, twittercommunity.com, I'm around and also my DMs are open. And also if you're building with the Twitter API, I'd love to hear what you're doing and get to know you. Um, yeah. Cool. cool. Thank you so awesome. much, Chris. This is so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. This was this was super amazing. Um, cool. Well, for, for folks in the future that are watching this, if you want to get in touch with Jessica, she is at Jessica Garson at Twitter. As she said, her DMs are open. Feel free to, to uh, chat with her about all things. And every presentation is 10,000% better when you have a cat in it. Yeah. Cool. I think I want to get a cat. So I think this is like, instead of me getting a cat, I have this like virtual cat. So I have, I have three right now. So I, I'm, I am a wash, a wash with kitties. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking hard about it. So we'll I, 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 encur I encourage cat ownership. Cool. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was super fun. And thanks everyone for watching and just really enjoyed this presentation. And yeah, thank you for like, also catching my spelling errors. So, <laughs> um, so you you totally asked me to do that. Otherwise, I would have been one of those guys going, do I say anything? No, I'll shut up. <laughs> I actually, so it's really funny that you mentioned that because like there was like a presentation a while back where like somebody in the back row, like I was like not sure like what like I was like, I was like, oh my God, I can't figure out like why this code isn't working. And I was like presenting at a conference and then someone like messaged me being like they literally like sent me a dm being like line six you forgot to close your brackets and i was like <laughs> I, and then they're like i don't want to say anything i don't want to blow you up <laughs> and i actually like was like and i got a dm from this person <laughs> like please like who's who was in the audience watching you <laughs> Yeah. that's amazing <laughs> yeah and like it just so happened because i was like really stressed i looked at my phone for a second and i was like oh it's line six like <laughs> now i know um and so after that i was like i need to like make it explicitly clear that i want you to like scream on your like top of your lungs like if you're in the back of like one of my audiences like where they are is because i don't care like yeah. i know i'm gonna like i know my spelling can use some work so you know <laughs> i really should I, I know that there's like a lot of like spell check like plugins for my um for my um, which which ide um, were you using i was using adam I, I, I know okay. that there is one and, and there's one for VS code. I should really probably dive into that a little bit deeper. If anybody I, has I any a, like spelling check plugins for their IDE that they like, let me know. Um, I, I will I will I will give some recommendations, but not during the recording because I know that that IDEs are very like much like religions. <laughs> Uh, you do not you do not say bad or good things about IDEs on on a on a developer recording because you will you will catch health, <laughs> hellfire. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of recommendations too, which I'm excited about. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, folks, uh, thank, thanks for joining us. Uh, once again, you've squandered away a perfectly good hour listening to V Brown Bag. And uh, <laughs> no. do, you, do you remember the old um, uh, NPR click and clack, the Tappert brothers, the, yeah. the, the car talk show? They always yeah. they always ended it with uh, you've squandered a perfectly good hour listening to us once again. And I always I always love that. So I say that every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> cool, folks, um, have a have a wonderful evening and we'll see you again next week. Cool. See you soon.